This presentation is an introduction to life, specifically the forms of life involved in wastewater treatment. And these life forms are all, or almost all, microbial. And what we generally refer to as biological wastewater treatment is actually microbiological wastewater treatment. And the processes occurring in this type of treatment plant rely on microbial activity. So we need to know at least something about these microorganisms which treat our wastewaters. Microbes are the most numerous, the most diverse, and perhaps with us, the most dominant form of life on Earth. And all life forms have evolved from microbes. So we're going to look at the tree of life, and we'll see how important the microbial world is. Until fairly recently, we divided life into kingdoms. For example, the plant and animal kingdoms, with which I guess you're familiar. However, evolutionary biologists now consider life in three domains the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya, all with capital initial letters. The bacteria and the archaea comprise what we generally refer to as bacteria, with a small b. The bacteria and the archaea are both prokaryotic, which is to say they have no defined cell nucleus. The eukarya, on the other hand, do. This is a schematic of the tree of life from an evolutionary biologist's perspective. It's somewhat complex, but at least we can straightforwardly see the three domains, the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya. Looking at the bottom of the slide, we can see two important events. First, about four billion years ago, the first cell or independent life form appeared. And second, about three billion years ago, there was the so-called last common ancestor, from which after this time, the three domains started to evolve. We belong to the Animalia, and our genus Homo only started to appear roughly two to two and a half million years ago, so we're very recent newcomers to planet Earth. This is a version of the tree of life for wastewater treatment engineers, and we're now going to consider important groups in the three domains that are especially relevant to us as wastewater treatment engineers. First of all, the domain bacteria. One common way of dividing the bacteria is into gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Originally, this was a cell staining procedure devised by a Danish bacteriologist called Hans Christian Gram way back in 1884. But we now know that gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria differ in a much more fundamental and genetic way. The gram-positives are monoderms, that is to say they have a single membrane cell wall, and the gram-negatives are diderms and have a double membrane cell wall. The main group of gram-negative bacteria is the proteobacteria, and these are currently classified in five classes, alpha to epsilon. From our point of view as wastewater treatment engineers, three general groups of the proteobacteria are important. First, the chemoheterotrophs, which get the carbon they need to make their cells from organic compounds, and we'll talk more about them in a moment. Then there are the chemoautotrophs, and these get their cell carbon from dissolved CO2. An important group of chemoautotrophs is the nitrifiers, which oxidize ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. And thirdly, there is a group of photosynthetic bacteria, including the purple bacteria and some green bacteria. The chemoheterotrophs are a very important and diverse group, including the family Enterobacteriaceae. And this is a hugely important family as it contains E. coli, fecal and non-fecal coliforms, Salmonelli, Shigelli, Vibrios, and Compilobacters. Almost all the aerobic and facultative bacteria are wastewater treatment, the BOD removers, are chemoheterotrophs, as are some important anaerobes, for example many of the sulfate-reducing bacteria. The chemoheterotrophs that we've mentioned so far are proteobacteria. The other main gram-negative group, the bacterioidetes, contains the Cytophaga flavobacterium complex, and these are also common aquatic chemoheterotrophs. The gram-positives are in two groups, but we don't need to know this level of detail. Suffice it to say that among the gram-positives are the genera Bacillus and Clostridium, with the former being aerobic and the latter anaerobic, and the Clostridia are also spore formers. The so-called fecal streps, members of the genera Streptococcus and Enterococcus, are gram-positive, as are members of the genus Desulfur tumaculum, which are thermophilic sulfate-reducing bacteria. There are other important groups in the bacteria, for example the cyanobacteria and the chlorobi, which are both photosynthetic. Now the domain archaea. All archaea are gram-positive. 
They typically live in extreme environments, for example where it's very hot or very salty or very acid, and often where there's no oxygen. They include the methanogens, the microbes that produce methane, CH4, so they're in septic tanks, anaerobic ponds, and anaerobic sludge digesters. They also include the halophiles, or salt lubbers, marine bacteria, for example, and these are important if we discharge raw or treated wastewater into the sea. The third domain, the eukarya, has some members that are important in wastewater treatment, for example the green algae, which are the workhorses of waste stabilization ponds, some protozoa are serious human pathogens, and some non-pathogenic groups are important in activated sludge. In the plantae, there are the various plants grown in constructed wetlands, generally reeds and rushes. And in the animalia, there are the pathogenic helminths, which cause a range of chronic infections in poor communities in developing countries. Finally, a word on diversity in the domain bacteria. There is enormous diversity throughout this domain. For example, the cyanobacteria and the proteobacteria are less closely related to each other than our plants and animals, strictly the plantae and the animalia, the two main kingdoms we used to group all life into. Put another way, we're closer genetically to a flowering plant or an oak tree than cyanobacteria are to proteobacteria.